episode of Single Mom Memoirs. What's the word, y'all? Know who that is? You know who I am? What's cracking? Okay, we're gonna get right into it, all right? Because for some reason, I don't know why the Bitter Baby Daddy story just completely took over the entire channel. That was not the point of this show. The point of it was to show you that you can make it out of this type of relationship with someone who is, and dare I say, I hate to say it because it's so overly used, like someone that has uh, narcissistic tendencies or habits um, and or abusive. In our case, it was all of those things. So we had many questions that were on Facebook, uh, a lot concerning the oldest child, Quentin. We will add him in when he is, yeah, yeah. But this kid here, yep, has some things to say. Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> mm -mm. Now. I seen a lot of the questions or just comments on, you know, the our recent video that kind of blew up, you know. Some of you guys and in your opinions they're just it's just like bad opinions. I know it's your own opinion, but they're just like not logical opinions at all. So let's get into the first question. Was the police ever called now this is concerning the incident when his father and the uncles jumped on him yes no no the police were not called reason i have no clue well let me just say this part now i know i couldn't call the police because he was over there with his father when it happened so when i found out that it happened it was the it was it the same day nah it was the day after no it was the same day because while you guys were arguing quentin called me oh yeah yeah i forgot about that so quentin wound up calling me i told him i told quentin to call the police but i don't think he ever did i told him to give me a call back because at this point as as a woman and a mother what 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 can i do i'm not over there and even if i were to call the police and they're asking me what happened i would have no clue so the only thing that I could do was when he came back to, well, actually, you didn't even come back to me right away because they were playing keep away with my child. So his phone, his cell phone was taken away from him. So I couldn't call him directly. They wound up taking him over his grandmother's house. And, um, I don't, were you able to use the phone over there? Right. So then they also didn't let him use the phone. So I had to sneak the next day to go pick him up from school that's when i found out everything that happened um i went to the police station i got a police report I tr well i tried to file it but they told me that i couldn't because he was not with me because it was the next day it was a school day so i had to wait until that following monday took him up there got the order of protection put against him and we were okay until our next court date which was i think it was like a week or two out now just to add a little bit more to the story right so when he was over his father's house all of his clothes were over there as well we went to try to retrieve his clothes from his grandmother's house except they threw all his clothes away all of the clothes that I purchased with my money because mind you I was not receiving any child support at all all of his clothes were thrown away including the hoodie that he was wearing the day when it happened and it was torn um, after I picked him up his paternal grandmother called me and basically was questioning me as to why I picked my child up from school I have not spoken to this woman in I don't know how many years and she never liked me in the first place so I didn't understand why she was calling me. That's neither here nor there either. But I say all that to say so after you get jumped by your father and your uncles and now you have no clothes to wear and here I am again back to left to pick up the pieces. Oh well, that, that was the answer. I didn't really have the answer to that that's why I didn't answer it. I just it was just a good question. I just wanted to let her answer it. But the next question is, somebody said, not jumped by the dad and the uncles. Um, unfortunately, yes, by the dad and the uncles. A lot of people were saying that you were being disrespectful. That's why the uncles came in and 
I guess, helped your father? Yeah, let me, um, let me fix that real quick. I was not being disrespectful whatsoever. So, long story short, it all started because I sent my mother a picture of a wall that I was like building. I was putting tile up, right? And he had a problem with it. So he was like, I got a right to protect their house. Your mom doesn't need to know everything you're doing or where you're at. I was like, I just wanted to show her what I, what I did, you know, cause, cause the wall came out nice, you know? So I, I, I was just showing her what I was doing. And you know, before we even got to the crib or got to the house that we were working on, I was texting her before. So it's just like, I just kind of, you know, it just kind of happened. He was like, when you get home, put your phone on the, put your phone on the table and, and write down your password. And I was like, I was like, that's, I was like, I don't know, I'm like, okay. But I was like, okay, but, but why? And he hates when I question him, like, at all. Like, it don't even matter what it is. He hates when I, well, not, not even when I, he just hates being questioned. So, I said, why? And he was like, are you questioning me? You know what I'm saying? Coming off real strong. And I just asked, I just literally asked why. Calm, nice voice. I, just, I was just like, well, why I got to do that? You know? We get home. Um, I put my phone down on the table. I write down the password. I write down the wrong password. And then I said, I don't know why you make me do this anyways, right? As I was walking off, you know, I ain't gonna lie. Was it, was, was it a little disrespectful? Yes. Okay, should should I have said it? No. Okay. I don't see it as being disrespectful. It's mouthy, but it's not disrespectful. Right. But yeah. I'm it's sorry, go ahead. Just being mouthy. You know you know what I'm saying? So you know, he was like, What you just say? I said it loud enough for you to hear me. So I'm not I'm not gonna say it again. So he was like, you know, who who are you talking to? You know, I said, uh, I'm your father, you know. A whole bunch of that stuff. Sorry. I was just trying to like take my bags back downstairs because I was just low key tired for real. And I didn't feel like hearing his mouth like at all. So I tried to open the door. He, he closed, well, he, he didn't close, but like he put his hand on it. So, so he stopped it from opening. I said, excuse me. And then he was like, who are you talking to? You know, he put the finger in my face. Ah. Uh, I hate when people put their finger in my face. Don't put your finger in my face, respectfully. I was like, can you please get your finger on my face? He was just so mad and I don't, I, I don't know how or, or why. I, 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 didn't, I didn't do anything to make him like this mad. Like, I don't understand. I didn't, I didn't understand why he was so mad, right? I can understand if he was like a little upset or something, but like he was like really mad at this point. So he kept getting in my face, stuff like that. It got physical. Uh, I went downstairs, packed my bags, and then I was like, I'm leaving. I told, I told him I'm leaving. I packed all my stuff and said I'm leaving. So I packed all my stuff and I went to go sit on the front porch. I was literally thinking about where I was finna go. So as I'm sitting on the front porch, I see my two uncles pull up, right? So I'm like, is that, is that them? So they hop out the car. I'm like, oh yeah, that is them. Uh, you know, okay. I'm like, what are they doing here? I'm already knowing they finna be on something. My uncle, he walk up and he like, what's going on? What's going on? I tell him what's going on. And he was like, well, why are you being disrespectful? I was like, well, how do you know I was being disrespectful? Because your dad just told me what happened. I was like, and yeah, you already calling me disrespectful without without even hearing what I my side of the story or you know what I'm saying? What well, I gotta say. I was like, yo nephew in there. And he was like, yo nephew? Yo nephew? And I was like, he was like, boy that's your mm, daddy or whatever. And I was like, well he's showing acting like it. You know, I was just being like real nonchalant at that point. I didn't feel like talking to anybody. I was heated, mad, like really, like really mad. So, he put his finger in my face. So I was like, bro, why? Like, what's the point? Like, I was like, uncle, can you please get your finger on my face? And then he was like, boy, I don't gotta do nothing. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, you know, you're supposed to listen to, you know, I'm, a whole bunch of that nonsense. And I was like, I was like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care who you are. Leave me alone. Right? Why are you here? Like, why are you here? Like, no, no, nobody needs you here. You're, you're, use, you're useless right now, right? So getting in my face, all of that. So I stand up because I, I was sitting down, of course. I stand up. And I'm like, I'm like, um, move. I'm not going to say it again, right? So he said, who are you talking to? Oh, because he's in your face? Yes. He said, who are you talking to? Boom, he grabbed me or whatever. So, so, you know, we got the tussling, you know? And he's like, six, six, seven. He, look, my uncle's up there, okay? He's up there in age. I don't even know why he tried that battle. It was, it was just, it was just, it was just, no. Uh, I just feel like people in that age group, they don't know how to use their words, so they use their hands. Like they, cause they always, you know, the spare the rod, spare the child type thing. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody went to crib. My grandma told me to sit in her car. They came out. My grandma tried talking to me. She hit me in my chest like four times. I told her, I was like, don't touch me again. And then I pushed her because it's like, what? what what need did you what, what what made you feel like you could punch me in my chest? You pushed her after she hit you the first yes. time? Yes. Yes, I did. Why did she hit you? I don't know. I I literally couldn't even talk because I was literally bawling my eyes out. She won't come over here and try to talk to me. Do, does it look like I want to talk? Use your head, right? So she don't come over. What's going on? No, 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 I'm talking to you. I was like, I was like, I was like, leave me alone. Get out of my face, please, right? She said, who are you talking to? I was like, I'm talking to you. Like who, like why do y'all keep asking who am I talking to? I'm talking to you. Y'all, y'all won't respect, give respect. It's as simple as that, I promise you. Cause if everybody was just calm and collective about it, none of this would ever happen. She said some stuff. I guess I said a response she didn't like. Boom. Who you talking to? Boom, boom. You know, and, uh, boom. I got off the car. I was like, I, didn't, I ain't gonna lie. I gave her a good push, too. What, you pushed her in the car? No, no. Like, I was sitting in the passenger seat, and it's like she had the door. She was, like, leaning up against the door. And so I stepped out the car, and then I was like, oh, okay. Right. My uncles and my dad, they were standing outside the door, and I guess they seen it, so they came running over there. My dad definitely, he slammed me on the ground, ripped my hoodie, punched me in my chest. He almost hit me in my face. My uncle had me by my legs, pulling me up, and I hit my head in the street. My back is torn. My back, my back is on the street. I can't do nothing. They all ran over there so fast, it was like a blur. That's the jump part. Why would she keep you over her house if she felt like you were a threat? And that's the part that I don't understand. And to, to even the point where I couldn't contact him, that's where it's an issue because I also did not have her phone number. Yeah. I only got three more questions, so bear with me here, guys. This dude commented, this is your version of what happened. And if you did something, would you ever admit it? He was talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I just want, I just want to, Tap in on the part where he said, this is your version of, of, of what happened. No. This is my version of what happened. Who told her? Okay, then. Stay in your place. <laughs> um, <laughs> my next, the next one is, why did the uncle and dad take him on? Uncle... My grandma is my uncle's sister, my dad is my, or my grandma is my dad's mom. And I pushed her and I guess that provoked them in some type of way as to where they need to use like unnecessary physical force. And yeah, I, I don't, I don't really know why they decided I can take two grown men at once. Was it two or was it three? Was it all? No, in the street it was just two. However, I will say this too, um, when you are using your hands to talk, people talk back. 
and just because they're children that doesn't mean that they don't have feelings and they're not human you're asking a child who's getting struck multiple times to just stand there and take it isn't that the literal definition of abuse okay last one it says what if he was 16 first of all i wasn't so there are no what ifs in this true story this non-fiction story there are no what ifs i was like 14. there are no what ifs this is real and true this is real true and factual it says and built like a house so when when you're a multi-athlete what do you think you're going to look like you do you think you're not gonna look swole or, or, or buff or when you with when, when you lift weights what what do you think is gonna happen your body's gonna look nice and you're gonna look strong i'm sorry for wanting to have a nice body <laughs> bro what no but see but then if you're that big then that means that that you can take on i can take on yeah, like because yeah, you're, you're super strong, even though you're only 14. Make it make sense, please. It says there are three sides to the story. Which is kind of true. They say it's the truth. No, they, they said there's your side, their side, and then the truth. But... What happens if your side is the truth? Only one side is the truth. No discredit, but... That man ain't known for the truth. No, not at all. He has no social media on purpose. Oh, okay. And I know you're probably wondering, why was he over there with his father? We have joint custody of them. And I allow the boys to choose wherever they want to live because ultimately it's their life. So Isaiah is now with me. However, he was living with his father for a short amount of time because, you know, I guess that's when his little nuts fell. And that's when he was kind of feeling himself. That's the way that I felt. However, I didn't know in the background what was really going on. From the outside looking in, since I have two sons by the same man and we were married, I never thought that it would be an issue as far as him treating them different to the point where it would cause so much issues between the kids. I just found out a couple of years ago, I want to say in 2019. No, because him and I broke up in 2017. In 2017 is when I found out that he was treating Isaiah so much differently than his brother. So much to the point, and I just have to say this real quick, I had to write it down because it was so many things that happened that I had to understand why he was behaving the way that he was. He would repeatedly tell Isaiah how much smarter his brother was than him. He would always get physically punished a lot of the times. It was even a Christmas where his brother received gifts and he didn't receive anything at all. He was left out of his wedding on purpose because Quentin was in the wedding, but he was not. He attended Quentin's graduation, but didn't attend his. That was only in eighth grade. And he also broke his finger, okay? So at this point, what is it that a child can do to your parent in order for you to actually erase them as far as any of your existence? Now, I didn't understand that. And that's why I started this show because I said there's no way in hell my kids were going through this and I was just there and I didn't do anything. So this is me right here right now doing something. Now, I was able to get Isaiah and reel him back in because, of course, his behavior started to become so overwhelming. And again, this is just me thinking that he's just being a boy. But it's been so many years that your father has been <laughs> mistreating you that you are finally saying something. And when you start to say something as a child, now you're being punished even more because how dare you say something? If you feel like whatever's going on with you is going to impede the way that you parent, I need you to say that. Say it to the point where I don't have to go around and try to fix some shit that you messed up because it's hard and I'm tired. He's tired. 
tired to the point where he's being mistreated physically and Quentin is being mistreated in a whole nother different way because manipulation happens to a point where you cannot see what's going on until years down the road. And here we are at 17, he is exhibiting those same things. He will shut down. He won't say anything. And that bothers me because he's not able to be himself. He even took it so far to the point where he tried to drive a wedge between both of the brothers. Remember when I said that he got Christmas gifts for the older, the older brother and not the youngest one? That particular Christmas, he gave him a headset. Isaiah wanted to use it. I don't want you to use it because dad gave me this and you were being bad so you can't use it. So now the brothers are into it because Quentin doesn't want to share. And it's not even Quentin's thought. It's, that's not even, those are not his thoughts. Indoctrination is real. I am hot, y'all. I'm hot because this is, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. So now that I'm thinking that since he's just overreacting because he's just becoming of age, I sent him over there to, to live with his father for a short amount of time. And that's when they keep bumping heads heads to the point where they actually fall out and they you know the whole police report thing and the order of protection and so on and so forth what i don't understand about all of these things right here right now is that even with all the things that you're doing to your own kids i'm still the one that's being responsible for everything and I didn't even say half of the shit that he did to me. This is just what he did to the kids. Now, I would literally be a bitter baby mama if I sat up here and I told you everything that he did. And then it wouldn't even look like I was bitter. It would look like I was battered and not bitter. And if you, I mean, and, and there are documents to prove it. So the history of violence is real. The manipulation is real. Everything is real and we're tired of being tired. Sorry, I went on for a long time. It's all good. I just, I, I didn't realize what was happening to you. And I, I really didn't know. I understood that it was something happening, but I, I couldn't pinpoint it. And this is why it's important as a parent for you not to be selfish. Because regardless of what you're feeling, your child is going to be feeling something and they won't be able to um, identify what it is or even communicate what it is. So if you take the time and you sit there with your children and you talk about it just so they can articulate it for themselves, that puts them ahead of the curve, especially for when they get older, because they'll be able to have conversations that are uncomfortable, which we always say in all of our episodes. But in this particular case, when there is when, when there is mistreatment and abuse coupled within the same in the same thing, this could have turned out so much more worse. If I was the same amount of destructive person as he was, there's no telling where our children would be. Well, that about wraps it up from this point, because um. I'm done talking about this. The only thing I'm going to do myself is heal because I have to heal from what he's done to, to our children and what he's also done to me. The only thing that's important right now are these children. So make them the main focus. Always, always, always ask your children how they're feeling. That's, that, that's all we got for this point. So yeah. Until then, manifest, manifest daily. daily.